Hello. I am your teacher. Arthur Theist, let me explain the problem science has with religion. May I ask you to come forward miss? Yes, you there. Thank you. I have a question. You are a Christian, are you not? Yes sir. I am. So, you believe in God? Absolutely. And would you say, God is good? Yes, God is good. Is God all-powerful? Can God do anything? Yes. Are you good or evil? The Bible says, I am evil. Aha, the Bible. Here's one for you. Let's say there's a sick person over here and you can cure him. You can do it. Would you help him? Would you try? Yes, sir. I would. So, you are a good person. I wouldn't say that. But why not say that? You'd help a sick and maimed person if you could. Most of us would, if we could. But God doesn't. He doesn't. Does he? My brother was a Christian who died of cancer, even though he prayed to Jesus to heal him. How is this Jesus good? Can you answer that? Can you? You can't. Can you? Let's start again. Miss. Is God good? Ah, uh, yes. And Satan. Is he good? No. And where does Satan come from? From God. That's right. God made Satan, didn't he? Tell me, is the evil in this world? Yes, sir. Evil's everywhere, isn't it? And God did make everything, correct? Yes. So who created evil? If God created everything, then God created evil, since evil exists, and according to the principle that our works define who we are, then God is evil. Is the sickness, immorality, hatred, ugliness, all these terrible things, do they exist in this world? Yes. So, who created them? I repeat, who created them? You sir, come forward please. Tell me, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, professor, I do. Science says, you have five senses you use to identify and observe the world around you. Have you ever seen Jesus? No sir. I've never seen him. Then tell us if you've ever heard your Jesus. No sir, I have not. Have you ever felt your Jesus, tasted your Jesus or smelt your Jesus? Have you ever had any sensory perception of Jesus Christ, or God for that matter? No sir, I'm afraid I haven't. Yet you still believe in him? Yes. According to the rules of empirical, testable, demonstrable protocol, science says your God doesn't exist. What do you say to that, son? Nothing. I only have my faith. Yes, faith, and that is the problem science has with God. There is no evidence, only faith. Professor. May I ask a question? Certainly. Is there such a thing as heat? Yes. Of course there is heat. And is there cold as well? Yes, young man. There is cold also. No, sir, there isn't. You can have lots of heat, even more heat, super heat, mega heat, unlimited heat, white heat, a little heat or no heat, but we don't have anything called cold. We can hit up to 458 degrees below zero, which is, no heat, but we can't go any further after that. There is no such thing as cold, otherwise we would be able to go colder than the lowest, which is minus 458 degrees. Every body, or object, is susceptible to study, when it has, or transmits energy, and heat is what makes a body, or matter, have, or transmit energy. Absolute zero is the total absence of heat. You see, sir, cold is only a word we use to describe the absence of heat. We cannot measure cold. Heat, we can measure in thermal units because heat is energy. Cold is not the opposite of heat, just the absence of it.
What about darkness, Professor? Is there such a thing as darkness? Yes, what is night, if it isn't darkness? You're wrong again, sir. Darkness is not something, it is the absence of something. You can have low light, normal light, bright light, flashing light, but if you have no light constantly, you have nothing, and it's called darkness, isn't it? That's the meaning we use to define the word. In reality, darkness isn't. If it were, you would be able to make darkness darker, wouldn't you? So, what point are you making? My point is, your philosophical premise, is flawed, to start with, and so your conclusion must also be flawed. Flawed? Can you explain, how? You are working on the premise of duality. You argue, that there is life and then there's death, a good God and a bad God. You are viewing the concept of God as something finite, something we can measure. Sir, science can't even explain a thought. It uses electricity and magnetism, but has never seen, much less fully understood either one. To view death as the opposite of life, is to be ignorant of the fact that death cannot exist as a substantive thing. Death is not the opposite of life. Just the absence of it. Now tell me, Professor. Do you teach your students that they evolved from a monkey? If you are referring to the natural evolutionary process, young man, then yes. Of course I do. Sir, have you ever observed evolution, with your own eyes? Since no one has ever observed the process of evolution at work, and cannot even prove, that this process is an ongoing endeavor, are you not teaching your opinion? Are you now not a scientist, but a preacher? <laughs> to continue the point you were making earlier to the other student. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Is there anyone in the class who has ever seen the professor's brain? Is there anyone here who has ever heard the professor's brain, felt the professor's brain, touched or smelled the professor's brain? No one appears to have done so. So, according to the established rules of empirical, stable, demonstrable protocol, Science says that you have no brain, with all due respect, sir. <laughs> so, if science says you have no brain, how, can we trust your lectures sir? I guess you'll have to take them, on faith. Now, you accept that there is faith. And, in fact, faith exists with life. Now, sir. Is there such a thing as evil? Of course there is. We see it every day. It is in the daily example of man's inhumanity to man. It is in the multitude of crime and violence everywhere in the world. These manifestations are nothing else but evil. Evil does not exist sir, or at least it does not exist unto itself. Evil is simply the absence of God. It is just like darkness and cold. A word that man has created to describe the absence of God. God did not create evil. Evil is the result of what happens when man does not have God's love present in his heart. It's like the cold that comes when there is no heat, or, the darkness that comes, when there is no light.